Hello, welcome to CFT's online lectures. Today we're going to talk about rubouts. If you remember earlier on in the semester, I talked about rubouts being the most important lecture of the semester. Remember, I said if you didn't show up at all for the semester, but you showed up for this one lecture, you can probably pass the class. But if you missed this one lecture, you probably won't. So, this is a lecture that you guys won't really want to pay attention to. Rubouts. Rubouts historically have historically have been done using pumice, which is you see right here. If you remember when Vijay Velji came in was it two weeks ago for the to talk about shellac, royal lac, and the French polish, that he used um, pumice during the French polish, French polish process. Try saying that ten times. Nowadays, uh, rubouts are typically done with lubricant, sandpaper, and some, some type of polishing compounds. We'll go more into the specific details of rubout in just a few moments. Purpose of a rubout is to remove any type of brush stroke, any streakiness in your finish, any dust, any bubbles, any type of debris that got onto your top coat after the application of your top coat. I know a lot of you came up to me to show me your shellac board and because of all the streakiness in your shellac board and I told you, I said, don't worry about it. When, uh, when we do the rub outs, all of that will be removed. And which I'm gonna demonstrate that for you guys also in just a few moments. The, one of the important things that I didn't really talk about um, prior, up until today is the type of sheen that you use for your top coat. Um, as important as it is to determine the proper top coat that you want to use, it's also important to remember the sheen that you're going to use. Because the sheen affects the rub out process. So if you start with a semi-gloss, you can rub out a semi-gloss all the way down to a flat, or take it up to a satin, or take it back up to a semi-gloss, take it up to a gloss, or even take it up to a high gloss. But if you start with a flat, you can only take it to a flat. If you start with a satin, you can only go flat or satin. But if you, if you do choose a gloss, you can take a gloss all the way back down to a flat, build it up to a satin, to semi-gloss, to a gloss, even to a high gloss. So you typically want to keep the sheen of your top coat around a semi-gloss or a gloss. If you notice that in um, class, all of our top coats are basically semi-gloss. There is one that is satin because it's only available in satin. If you remember when we talked about the top coats, determining the uh, proper top coat was pretty important as to what the use of the furniture, your piece of furniture was gonna be used for, et cetera. One of the things it's also important to consider is the sheen of your top coat. Your sheen is greatly affects your rub out process. For example, you can start with a you can have a semi-gloss, and during the rub-out process, you can take that down from a flat to a satin, up to a semi-gloss, up to a gloss, up to a high gloss. So you can rub out a semi-gloss to any sheen that you want. Unfortunately, if you start with a flat, you're going to be stuck with a flat. If you start with a satin, you can only go from a flat to a satin. But if you start with a gloss, you can go from a gloss all the way down to a flat and back up to a high gloss. So you want to make sure that your top coat is a semi-gloss. If you look at all the top coats that we have in class, they're all a semi-gloss with the exception of one, which is a satin because it's only available in a satin. Let's talk about the criteria that is needed for the rubber process. First is you need your top coat, which would be nitrocellulose, shellac, uh, water-based lacquer, whether it's an oil finish, a rubbed on oil finish, a um, oil water-based poly. But a top coat is needed for a rub out process. Second is time. Industry, industry standard is 72 hours, meaning you have to wait 72 hours before you can uh, do the, start the rub out process. Now, ideally, you wanna wait a little bit more. So for shellac or any, uh, shellac, not just cellulose lac, or any two-part finish, you want to ideally wait at least a week. Preferably two weeks, but one week is, um, is good enough. Any type of urethane or varnish, whether it be poly or oil, you want to typically wait about two weeks before you start the robot process. 
you want to give the uh, the coat your top coat enough t enough time to um, to cure. Basically, you don't want it doesn't you don't have to wait the entire thirty days that we talk about um, in the class, but you, roughly about one to two weeks depending upon the coat. Let's talk about supplies that are needed. First is lubricants. Lubricants are needed um, during the sanding process of your rub outs. One of the lubricants that you will need, which you will be using on your shellac board only, is mineral oil. Star bought CVS mineral oil or any drugstore, any drugstore you can um, find mineral oil. I keep it in this little small squirt bottle container for convenience purposes of the rub out. Next is odorless mineral spirits or odorless paint thinner. May, um, what you buy and find in any major home improvement store is totally adequate. But you do want to make sure that it's odorless. Just um, because you're going to be working with, you're going to be breathing this in, so it's just better to go with the odorless paint thinner. Again, I also keep it in a small little container bottle like this for convenience purposes. Second, sandpaper. We talked about silicone carbide, aka wet dry sandpaper. This is what you will need for the rub out process. You start with the 400 grit and you move up to the 600 grit. You can go a little bit higher in your grits of sandpaper. We will cover that at another point. Third is, you know what? We're not gonna get to that point yet. I'm gonna talk about these other types of finishes. Um, these, I mean, sorry, these other types of um, supplies needed for the rub out process when I actually take you through the robot process. But your three main ingredients are lubricant, sandpaper, and polishing compounds, which is what these are right here. We'll go into specifics about these in just a few, in just a few moments. Um, one thing that you do need um, to consider when doing the robot process is, process is the number of top coats that you have. You need to make sure that you have an adequate amount of top coats before you do your rub out process. If you do not have an adequate amount of top coats, what, is, what will happen is you will end up sanding through your top coat down to your bare wood. Or if, you're, and if, if your top coats are not thick enough, you'll end up sanding through one top coat and going down to the next top coat and developing what's called ghost lines or witness lines, which basically kind of looks like a little ghostly reflection in the sheen of the wood, the sheen of the top coat, I should say. So for your varnish and your um, urethanes, you need a minimum of three coats. For your wipe on gel, you need a minimum of six coats. For nitrocellulose lacquer, you need a minimum of four coats. One is your sanding sealer and three is nitrocellulose lacquer. For your water-based lacquer, you need a minimum of five coats. One is your sanding seal, and four are your water-based lacquer. Shellac, for a one-pound cut, is six coats. I'm sorry, made a mistake. It's actually five coats. <clears throat> we tell you eight coats in class because you, uh, most of you tend to apply your um, coat a little too thin, so I just I bump it up to eight. This way you'll have less of a chance of going through your finish. Oil finish, when used as a surface film finish, you need a minimum of four coats. And now a lot of people talk, ask about what do I do for this um, rub-out process for the sanded and oil finishes. You do not, there is no rub-out process for the sanded and oil finish. When you're sanding the oil in, you're actually doing the rub-out process at the same time. So now, um, now I'm gonna take you through the rub-out process. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my board, figure out which board I'm gonna use, and We'll start with our shellac board. So the lubricant that we're going to use for our shellac board is the mineral oil. So we'll take this, put it out of the way. And then I'm going to grab my wet dry sandpaper, my 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. And then we're going to move all the polishing compound out of the way because we will not be using it in just a moment. And we'll come back to it in just a little bit. And this way, you guys can see what I'm about to do. Oops. So 
So I have my shellac board. I put my gloves on because remember, safety first. And by the way, uh, a few of a few of you asked about these gloves from the previous video. They are nine millimeter uh, gloves that I purchased at. Uh, actually, I didn't purchase them. Somebody gave them to me, but they're available at Harbor Freight. Um, they are the nitrile gloves, by the way. And these are a little ripped. So we're just going to tuck that in. I like to reuse my gloves because I'm cheap like that. So here we go. So I'm going to take my lubricant. I'll spread my lubricant onto the one section of the, of the shellac board. I'm going to rub it all around. Just cover the entire section. Take my wet dry sandpaper and start sanding. All right, so I just did the 400 sanding of the um, shellac board. And what I'm gonna do is, and what I did was I wiped all the mineral oil off. I'm gonna hold it up to the light and then I'm gonna check for evenness on the sanding. So how I know that it's gonna be even Shellac is a gloss finish. When I hold it up to the light, I should not, all that gloss should be gone. So if there's like little specks of gloss popping through, that's actually okay, because you'll eliminate that with the 600 grit. But if you have a fair amount, like particularly around the corners, which is pretty common, of gloss um, kind of peeking through, you want to go back to your 400 grit and, uh, and continue with the 400 grit. We look pretty good here, so we're gonna move on to the 600 grit. So again, lubricant, back down on the board. Spread it all over. I'm gonna take my 600 grit, and the same thing. I am gonna start sanding. So I just did the 600 grit. Now I'm going to hold it up to the light again. I'm going to check the reflection of it. And this is nice and even. Pretty good. So we're going to move on. So we, um, let's say we're going to take this to a semi-gloss. So now what's going to happen is you're going to take, after you've done your 400 and 600 grit uh, sanding, you need to wait 24 hours. Then you're going to take Howard Feed and Wax, readily available at any major home improvement store and a high quality steel wool, which um, we have talked about the steel wool before. Libron 4 ot meaning four zeros, steel wool, is a very, very good steel wool. It's a steel wool that you'll wanna use in this process. You do not wanna, that stuff you get from Home, home Depot or Lowe's or any of those major home improvement stores, they tend to have oil in them so they're not, the quality of them is not very good. So Libron steel wool, 4 ot is what you want to use. Uh, we're going to pretend that 24 hours have just happened, even though it really hasn't. You're going to take your Howard Feed and Wax, give it a little shake, pour it onto your board. Take your steel wool, start polishing. Now, you do, not, um, you do not need to go with the grain of the wood. You can go in any direction that you want, up, down, left, right, circles, not a big deal. So we just apply the Howard Feed and Wax. We have, um, fast forward to time, pretend that 24 hours have passed. And we agreed before that we were gonna take this to a semi-gloss. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Howard Restore Shine Polishing Compounds with a piece of fleece or felt and I'm just going to start polishing the wood. Pour it on. Oop. Need to shake this up first. It's coming out clear like that. It is not. It was not shaking up. Shake it up. All right. 
There we go. Same thing, multiple directions. Doesn't have to be up and down, left and right. It can be circles, doesn't matter. So we've just applied the uh, Howard Restore Shine Polishing Compounds, right here. And uh, we've wiped off the excess. We're hold it up. We have a nice little, nice semi-gloss sheen to it. Now, if you remember I talked earlier on about uh, ghost lines or witness lines? I'm going to show you what they look like. Right here. This board was a board that was prepped by a student from a previous semester. So I wasn't exactly sure how many coats of shellac were on here, but I thought it'd be a good example, a great board to use, because most likely this would have happened. So this way you'll get an example of, um, this way you got an example, I should say, of ghost lines and witness lines. So right here, you can see, went through the top coats and actually went through the, the, um, the coloring that was used, the dye that was used underneath, and went started going down to the bare wood. This will happen to some of you. And if it happens, not a big deal. It's a learning lesson. You just need to know that you just need to apply thicker coats or more uh, quantity of coats. But don't sweat it. Like I said, as long as you document it, you're good to go. Now, this is a uh, nitrocellulose lacquer board, your oak board. We are going to rub out the nitrocellulose board to a gloss using something called, which I forgot to mention before, and I apologize for that, um, micro mesh pads. This is another supply that, um, that is needed, that could be, uh, not is needed, that could be used for the rub out process. It's a little block padding block with micro mesh pads that range from 1500 grit all the way to 12,000 grit. These are available um, on amazon.com. They are no longer, they used to be carried by Rockler, but Rockler no longer carries them. But there are two types of micro mesh pads. This is another set. This set is color coordinated. You do not want that set. The color coordinated set is for turning, not for um, rubbing out furniture or wood um, that it's not being turned. It, uh, if you end up getting those, what can happen is if, um, for those of you that are sanding and th that use the tips of your fingers, which a lot of you will do, you'll end up with finger streaks in your top coat as opposed to using the block, which gives you a more uniform of uh, polishing. So it's a similar process to what we did with the shellac board, except we're using the nitrocellulose lacquer board. So you want to take our th paint thinner. Paint thinner is the lubricant that is used in this. Again, we start with our 400 grit sand, uh, wet dry sandpaper. Then we move up to our 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. Once we um, are done with the 600 grit wet dry sandpaper, wait 24 hours, then we move on to our micro mesh pads. We start with a 15, as you can see I have used these, by the way these are washable and this set is actually, my set in particular is probably almost five years old now, so they last for quite some time and you, um, they are available in larger sheets as well. You start with your 1500, <clears throat> which we will do here, and sanding just like normal. Just go back and forth, back and forth, until eventually that scratching pattern just kind of starts to dissipate. Then you move on to your 1800. I got my 1800, sorry. Move on to your 1800. Once your 1800 is complete, your 20, you move up to your 2400. Then you move up to your 3, 3200. 
And then for a fairly nice gloss, you can stop at 4,000. For a high gloss, you can go all the way up to 12,000 if you'd like. But for the sake of this board, we're only going to go up to, we only went up to 4,000. And if you see, I don't know if you cameraman, can you see that? You see the sheen on this board right here versus the original. You see the sheen here that we created, which is a gloss sheen versus the original. So it created a nice sheen. But just one thing to keep in mind is that there are, there are tons of methods, different methods that you can use for the rub out process. What I'm showing you is only just a few examples of what you can do. So one of the methods is you can start your wet dry sandpaper at 400 going all the way up to 600 to 800 to 1200 and so forth up to 2000 grit. Once you hit 2000 grit, you can move on to the Meguiar's polishing compound system. One of the methods for the um, polishing compound system is you start with one, which is the medium cut cleaner, move up to number two, which is the fine cut cleaner, move on to number nine, which is the swirl remover, then you move on to number seven, the show car glaze. Now another variation of the Meguiar system is start with number two, the fine cut um, <coughs> cleaner, excuse me. Move on to number nine, the swirl remover. Move on to number seven, which is the cleaner wax. I'm sorry, number six, cleaner wax. So two, nine, six. And you finish it off with the number seven. Show car glaze. Another um, method that you can use for rub outs is pumice. In order to use pumice, you need a felt block or a rubber block. Lubricant is needed um, for the for pumice, so depending upon the board that you're doing. Um, so for shellac, for example, I'm going to use shellac as my lubricant. And that is it. That's all we're going to go into right now. If you refer to your notes, uh, which will be posted online in, in a little bit later, there are a couple other different variations of the rub out process that you can go through. Um, so just make sure that you do look through your notes before Thursday, before our next class, I should say. And... Uh, that is all. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on Thursday.